What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a Pi Station 5, otherwise known as a Pi S5. And what I'm using here is a super small PS5 clone. This is a fake PS5 that you can pick up online for around $18. It does run retro games, but it's mainly NES hacks. I did a dedicated video on this showing off what it can do out of the box, and it's really not that impressive. Like I said, it's mainly NES games, and a lot of them are just hacks. In that video, I stated that one of the main reasons I picked this up was to throw Raspberry Pi 4 inside of here, or some other internals like an Android TV box. Since I made that video, I had a lot of people asking me to go ahead and do the Raspberry Pi 4 first, so that's what we're doing in this video. I'm going to call this the Pi Station 5, or the Pi S5. So if you're looking for these online, you can go with something like the Game Station 5 or the GS5. You can get them anywhere from $18 up to 30 bucks. I paid 18 and after shipping, it was around 23 to 24 to the door. Pulling the side off, you can see there's not much going on in here, and we have plenty of room to throw a Raspberry Pi in here. Taking the internals out is really easy, and I just did a little bit of a mock-up here. We've got the Raspberry Pi 4, and I also wanted to add some external USBs on the front, so I just ended up buying some 12-inch extensions with a 90 degree on one end. These are USB 3.0. I'll leave a link to everything I'm using in the description. They do fit right up front pretty nicely, but I'll have to find some kind of mounting system. So in for order it. to get my HDMI and USB Type C for power on the Raspberry Pi 4 out the rear, I was going to 3D print a little bracket, but I came across this little case that I already had laying around. These are really cheap. It's just a black plastic case, and this is actually going to fit in here really nicely. But we do have some pegs that need to be cut off, and I'm just going to do that with a little battery power Dremel. I just kind of want to smooth this out, and I will sand this down with a separate attachment. So there's several ways to mount this in here. Um, I'm actually going to super glue this in once I get everything lined up, so I'm going to be super careful to get it lined up properly. But in order to make room for the I.O., I will have to cut the plastic shroud on the Mini PS5. Now you could go in here with a little Dremel and just Dremel out each hole, but for me, since I already have this black plastic case, I just ended up cutting a whole section out so we can line that right up with the rear so we'll have access to the USB Type-C, both HDMI ports, and our 3.5mm audio jack. So far it's coming out great, but I need to worry about mounting those USBs up front so they don't wiggle around and they kind of line up. And one of my favorite materials to work with is this stuff called Paylight. It's also known as Expanded PVC. Very easy to cut, and what we can do here is make a spacer and a mount out of this using super glue and this pay light. And it turned out looking something like this, so we have those USBs mounted in here properly. They're lined up. Now, I kind of want to add this button here. What I'm going to do is just set up a safe shutdown script, so when I press the button, it'll safely shut down the Pi, and I can also turn it back on. So I've just cut the included reset and power button PCB that came with the mini PS5 case, and I've kind of secured it with a piece of pay light and some super glue. There is a bit of hot glue on the back of the PCB just to kind of get those connections sitting there nicely after I soldered them. I also want to add a fan, and this case did come with one, but I'm actually going to be using something called a Pi Shim. This is fully controllable from software, really quiet, and it'll keep it nice and chilly. So I've got everything mounted in here really nicely. We've got our cables routed for those front USB 3.0 ports. I've got that safe shutdown button wired up to the correct GPIO pins. It's really just a micro switch, and I've actually done a video on a safe shutdown script in the past, or if you do a quick Google search, you can find everything you need to know. So for this, I'm actually going to be running Botocera, but you could install Recallbox, you could install Raspberry Pi OS, or RetroPi. I've got my SD card ready to go, already installed in the Pi. And uh, yeah, the case just fit together really nicely. Got those front USB 3.0 ports. They are functional. They're plugged right into the 3.0 ports on the Raspberry Pi 4. Around back here, we do have access to our USB Type-C for power in on the Pi, both HDMI ports and our 3.5 millimeter audio jack. All right, so I've got everything set up here. I've installed Botocera to a micro SD card and just threw a few games on it. We've got HDMI and our USB Type-C power in. And I've set the script up for the button. It's just a simple on and off script. It'll shut it down safely and start it up once it's shut down. But the first time you plug it in, it's automatically gonna power on. That's just how that script works. And a lot of these images already have that script built in. You just need to enable it from the settings. And I'm running the latest version of Botocera 33 as making this video. I've 
I've already done a little bit of testing. Haven't had any overheating problems or anything like that. I'm not overclocked given I don't have a huge heat sink on this. But the Pi shim that I'm using here does work well with the stock clocks and it's not thermal throttling at all. And just to keep the experience, I figured I'd go ahead and pair this DualSense controller up to it. It's an original PS5 controller paired over Bluetooth. So if you're not familiar with Botocera, it's a really awesome emulation front end for the Raspberry Pi. It's uh, just like RetroPie, as you can see. All of them have their differences. There's Recall Box, there's RetroPie, we've got Botocera, and there's a few others. With this, we can swap out the themes, and we can automatically download them from the downloader. It's just a really easy operating system to use. And I've got a couple installed. We'll just go through a few here. I really do like this one. It's got that nice looking wheel with some really great box art. And all of these are customizable from the settings. We'll go into the UI settings one more time. And I'm just going to go to the theme that I personally like using. I've installed a few games to test out. We're going to start off with, uh, let's go with some Sega Genesis, otherwise known as Mega Drive. We'll just do uh, Gunstar Heroes. But since this is a Raspberry Pi 4, we've already got a good idea of how this is going to perform. We can do some really awesome PSP games. It's not going to do all of them. Same thing with Dreamcast. It's basically got PlayStation 1 fully covered, and all of the lower-end systems run really well. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I initially was going to do an Android box, but I had a lot of people talking about the Pi. So I did this one first, but I ordered another one of these units. Since they're so cheap, I figured I could do two builds. And I've got an Android box planned for this with an S905X3. And with Android, it's easy enough to install an application so we can actually stream our PS5 games from our real PS5 to this mini. But yeah, as you can see, the DualSense controller is working fine with this over Bluetooth. And to exit, we'll just press Start and Select. It'll bring us right back into Emulation Station. And I'm going to go with a PlayStation game. We'll go with a PS1 game. I just went ahead and threw Spyro on here. We'll get right into it. So overall, I think it turned out pretty well. Those USB ports are working on the front, and I just used USB 3.0. You could go with more. One thing I'd actually like to do to this is add an external SD card, which would probably be easy enough with an external SD card extender. So if you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave links to everything I used in the description. But remember, I mean, this is really just an aesthetic mod. It's not going to up the performance of your Raspberry Pi 4. But I personally think this looks really cool. And the second I saw these mini PS5 clones online, I knew I had to get a couple of them just to do some modifications to them and add a Raspberry Pi. And like I mentioned, I also want to do one with an Android box. That way we could easily install the PlayStation Remote app and stream from our PS4 or even our PS5. And when it comes to those little Android boxes powered by the Amlogic S905X3 CPUs, they're really cheap and emulation performance is right on par with the Raspberry Pi 4. So we can do the same retro games on something like that that we can with the Pi 4. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I'd really like to know what you think about this build in the comments below. And like always... Thanks for watching.